sometimes when you say the when I, I know when I say the word wellness to people, often what comes back and what I've encountered is that people will be like, you know, I, I'm fit, I'm healthy, I eat well, <laughs> and that's 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 sure. pretty much all people think of when they think of wellness and well-being. And it's like, yes, that's that's important for sure. That's definitely a part of it. But wellness is quite a multi-dimensional concept, rather than it just being like, oh, you're physically fit or you're eating healthily. It's like, well, how are you dealing socially? How are you managing occupationally and financially, intellectually? How are you keeping yourself creative? and like expanding your mind and your mental capacity. But there are so many, again, aspects and dimensions to what it really does mean to be well. This is Startup and Storefront. Today's guest is Taryn Kalmeyer, founder of Remote Team Wellness, a company that strives to reduce stress in the workplace. In what is truly a sign of the times, they offer their wellness and meditation classes through video conferences. While we've talked a lot about how companies have had to pivot to a post-COVID environment, this is the first company we featured to have been born out of the lockdown. Karen recognized that just because companies weren't all working under one roof didn't mean that she couldn't offer her services to keep morale and mental well-being high. If anything, the prevalence of video conferences meant that she could reach a much wider audience than ever before. This is truly a prime example of finding the silver lining in a dark cloud. So listen in as we cover everything from why Taryn strives to do everything with intention, why she teaches that movement, mindfulness, and emotional intelligence are the three tenets to wellness, and she also leads us through a meditation session that is sure to leave you centered and relaxed. Now, back to the episode. All right, guys, welcome to the podcast. On today's show, we have Taryn for Remote Team Wellness. Taryn, tell us a little bit about what your company does. My company provides virtual wellness solutions for corporates to be able to take care of their people, prioritize their employees' well-being from wherever they decide to work from. And in terms of like, when, when did you start your company and how long have you been in the wellness space? So... I'll start with the second question first. I have been in the wellness space for the last 10 years. I've been working as a wellness coach, a yoga and meditation facilitator, and I've been working in the hotel space more. And when COVID hit, obviously the hotels got hit really, really hard. So mm. I wasn't able to work with hotels to improve their, get their guest wellness programs. Um, so I started working with more of my corporate clients because I just saw so many clients and friends struggling to make the transition and shift into remote work and working from home that I really saw the, the value of providing these resources and tools of, of wellness to people who are now in the situation where they've been relegated to their home space being their workspace and their child rearing space and their everything space. Um, and their companies aren't really doing too much to make sure that they are supported in that transition. So I really saw this as a necessary part of what's happening with our new virtual shift into a virtual working world. That's so true. We had, we had a guest on, he had a tech company and, and I would actually call him kind of progressive in the sense where he started meditating for on his own, just to clear mm -hmm. his head, obviously being a founder, you're dealing with, I'm sure, you know, you're dealing with employees, raising capital, your business, keeping everyone alive. And there's a tremendous amount of pressure. And then what he did was he actually ended up hiring someone to come in and he would, he would just, he would say, Hey, stay here for three hours. And then he would say, Hey, Tarin's here for three hours. And if you guys want, just book, you know, 30 minutes with her. And so it was completely uh, optional, but I thought it was amazing. You know, it was really amazing for someone to sort of, everybody needs it, but at some point employees, it's really important for them to sift through their thoughts because you ultimately want them to be productive, but also healthy. And if there's something that's really bothering them, you want them to, to work through that. As we transition to now being under COVID, what are some of the things you're seeing you know, just as it relates to how are people thinking about this? Obviously, if you're a parent and you're trying to work, you have kids, dogs, right? And, and a part of it to me is like, that's normal. And there's, I've seen some company policies in the space that say, let your kids be your kids. Like, just put yourself on mute. Don't shut off your camera, you know, and just be accepting of it. If you're going to eat it, like if you're at home and you're going to eat a sandwich anyway, leave your camera on. It's not a big right. deal. 
But then I've seen some other people who are like, I don't want to see your kids. I don't want to see your, you eat. And, uh, and it's just like this, this, what is happening? <laughs> There's like these two camps. What have you seen and, and how are you, you know, helping people cope through this, this crazy time? Yeah, it's so funny that you say that. It's like, there are those companies that are very much about about the professionalism and they're trying to keep that culture of what they had mm. known before in this new shift and it's it's just impossible to hold together everything that you know we had from the way we were working and the way that we we were used to doing things where it was so professional and so together this is not a together time basically mm -hmm. so what i've been seeing is that people need to just be a bit more real um, and so that that means that if it if it takes you know having to have your child on camera with you, or if it takes having to eat your lunch in between meetings because you're literally in back to back calls, I see so many people, and I've spoken to a lot of clients who have just been spending their time living on Zoom in this mm. time because it's like this is this is the interface, this is how we're interacting now, this is how we're reaching out and connecting with people. And so in that, companies really do need to be a little bit more compassionate about how intense and how all-encompassing the shift really is, because there's just so many layers to what is happening and to be able to support people in the smallest ways. Because I mean, it's small to have to eat lunch on camera. Everyone has to eat, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, like, it's, 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 it's about that compassion element more than anything, I'd say. And are you working with primarily the executives maybe on, on, on sort of setting up what it looks like, like setting up a, a culture of acceptance? Walk me through a little bit about what your, what your company is working with these people to achieve. Yep, absolutely. So basically, we have five different categories of services that we provide for companies. Um, and they just basically encompass everything that a person would need to support their general and overall well being. So at first, we start working with the executives and the decision makers to decide exactly where the company needs to support their employees. If it's if it's in movement, if it's a little bit more in mindfulness, maybe it's a bit more emotional awareness and intelligence, um, or if it's just a little bit more purpose driven, because, you know, everyone's dealing with different things and everyone's dealing with different aspects of their of their businesses being you know completely shaken up and completely uh, overthrown and taken taken in a direction that they weren't expecting and so we 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 basically go through a full organizational wellness assessment with the decision makers of the of the company to just decide like what is it that your employees are struggling with right now what has been the previous wellness program that you've had in place have you have you ever considered wellness as a priority for your company and some companies mm -hmm. just really haven't some companies right. haven't thought about you know the the fact that their people need to be taken care of in a different way outside of their working environment. There are, you know, those very Darwinistic companies that are like, you know, we, we, we all know the types. Yeah, it's just like, it's like, there's no, there's no hand holding here. There's no space for any of the soft, safe spaces or any of that. Um, it's all about, you just do your work and you get it done. And if there, if you can't get it done, it's, the it's on to the next. But at the, the crux of this is, this is a people, centric thing mm -hmm. that is happening right now. So there is something happening in the world to people and people are the foundation of businesses. So, so to true. just be realistic about that is important Number for one. all companies. Yeah, for sure. What are some of the, so in all of your research and as you're interviewing, you know, a wide array of companies, what are some of the things that you're hearing over and over that people are struggling with? And I, and I don't know if maybe it's Zoom fatigue or, you know, just give us a sense of what are people struggling with during this COVID-19 time? Yep. Zoom fatigue, definitely one. Um, what, what is it? Can you explain it to me? I've read a, bun of, a bunch of articles on it and I'm like, I really don't know what it is yet. How do you view Zoom fatigue? <laughs> so Zoom fatigue is basically this completely new phenomenon where people are just on camera, but not. it's almost like a presenteeism if, and if you don't know what presenteeism, presenteeism is basically you're at work and you're engaged in something, but you're not actually there. You're not actually fully mm -hmm. engaged. You are, your mind is somewhere else. You're kind of checked out. Um, and that's kind of what Zoom fatigue is, is creating a lot of symptoms around. It's like this, you're present, you're, you're physically there, but your mind is completely 
elsewhere because you have so many other things to be considering other than just this moment of we're having this meeting, but you have a million other things to do outside of this meeting and outside of the screen. So needing to be shifting between tasks and needing to be shifting between, you know, the distractions of just being in your home environment in general, that's really causing a lot of that Zoom fatigue as, as, as that's so true. Been, yeah, as it's been yeah. termed for sure. I like that. Even even for us on the podcast, I mean, one of the things we, mm. we try to do as many interviews in person because body language is such a key component to, you know, to, to having a discussion and to communication. And just on the podcast, it's one of these where we sit down, even today, everything's on do not disturb. Um, I make sure no one else is home, right? And it's like the both phone, because otherwise it's, it's impossible, All right? If there's a bird outside my window, I'm going to look at it. You know, it's like, <laughs> or like a squirrel, like any, any little thing or the UPS guy, you know, the, the biggest thing that has been killing the podcast is like, now, now I know the lawn, the lawn care guy. I know exactly, I know exactly when he shows up. <laughs> I know when the neighbor's lawn care shows up Tuesday at eight, our guys Wednesday at eight. And so it's like, we can't podcast because you're, you're totally right. There's so many of these distractions. And then mm. when you work with employees one-on-one, -on -one, what is it that you're really helping them achieve? Is it like, just walk us through a little bit about how you're helping them. So again, it really does, again, depend on firstly what the, what the decision makers have decided they mm -hmm. need. Let's talk about that. As you talk to all these companies, what are the, what are the one or two or three things that you're seeing that the decision makers are moving forward on, on this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So movement, mindfulness, and emotional intelligence. Basically, it's just how to keep a person well and present, how to allow yourself to come into a space of connecting with your own body. Um, and that's really what movement helps with. And that's what we've been helping a lot of employees with as well, to keep, just to keep that consistency of a movement practice to be able to get up out of your chair and move your body around because that's also something that contributes to you know to this fatigue and to be to being in a place where you eventually would lead to burnout because if you're not moving if you're not taking time to look away from the screen to shift your focus to other things then it becomes very dense and the energy or like the energy that you, you're sitting in kind of becomes quite heavy so um, basically, basically learning how to incorporate movement into your everyday, but be learning how to incorporate movement into your working environment as well, getting up and moving every hour at mm -hmm. least. Also having a movement practice um, and we'd have different types of practices. So it also really depends on the company. Some companies love the yoga and Pilates. Some companies are all about the hit and they want, you know, the harder, more physical things. That's all dependent on, again, the company's culture. When it comes to mindfulness, it's more about like the, the companies that are really just about keeping their employees very focused and aware and also helping to just foster that little element of creativity and resilience, as I said. So helping people to connect to themselves in a way that they're understanding where they, where they are in space, um, connecting back to their breath, coming back to their bodies. It's just, it's, it's a very interesting thing to see those clients kind of shift, especially the ones that really are quite anxious or in fight or flight or very go, 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 and very much about like the hustle. It's really, it's really beautiful to see how the mindfulness practices and the meditation practices really helps to bring those people into a deepened, deepened sense of awareness of, you know, their bodies, their minds, and not just, not just reacting to situations, but rather responding. I'll just mention two things that you touched on. I've been working from home for a long time. And so for me, I had to work really hard on figuring out a schedule. And so my schedule has basically become, you know, I wake up at seven or usually 6.30, 6.37, no alarm. It's just like, I just, I just try to keep it as natural as possible. No phone. I brush my teeth, no phone. I put the phone in my pocket. I make my coffee. I enjoy my coffee. I do the New York Times uh, crossword, which is, a, it's a mini one. So it takes like three minutes max, really small. It's like nine things. And then I lean into work. I work for two hours and then at, at usually around nine, I'll just go for a walk. I'll just go for a walk and it's like either music or it's an audio book that I'll listen to depending on the day. I'll go for maybe like a 20 minute walk. I come back and I do the same thing at 11, another walk. But the, the challenge for me has been on busy days, it's almost impossible, right? To have the discipline. Schedule. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I think, you know, I'm glad you're, you're mentioning the movement piece because I, I find it so refreshing. I find it so, especially under lockdown, you know, a lot of people are saying there's a lot of studies around, oh, well, if you're not going outside, then you're, you're not developing antibodies, you're not touching other bacteria. And so being in your house is kind of crippling to your immunity if yeah. you're not taking any other supplements or anything like that. And yeah. so it's like a, you have, there's so much more on the plate now, which is really interesting, right? It's like, you go home and you'd think, oh, I'm good. And there's so much more <laughs> now that, <laughs> that you yeah. have to do. It's funny. I saw on product hunt today, they just, they just released an app and it's the strangest thing. And so basically it's, it's a camera. It's like an app that plugs into your camera where if I touch my face, the camera blurs out. And so I don't know if it's meant to be like, if you're like touching your nose or something or like picking your nose and like you don't want to be seen but you forgot because you're on camera because you're just on camera like, it just blurs you out and i'm like what an interesting thing that exists Evolution. today yeah yeah, yeah. so Absolutely. Uh, if if you're someone who has maybe like you touch your face a lot you might want to <laughs> go on product hunt <laughs> That's also, it's also, this whole situation has kind of given us awareness of that, of how much we are touching our faces, how much we're touching other people, how much we're interacting with things outside of ourselves. Um, But as you say, like, those are the, those are actually ways to keep your immunity strong, to develop resistance and antibodies to anything that may try to attack your system. So Mm -hmm. all important, but kind of in a more balanced and moderated and hygienic way seriously if anything at least consciousness around hygiene has been raised uh, <laughs> through this situation a hundred percent when it comes to i mean i like I'll, personally i've never i go to the bathroom and i'll just say this to people so i'm being honest very rarely would i wash my hands very rarely and now it's every it's it's i'm so cognizant of it if i go out and i come home from the grocery store or anything and even if i've used the hand sanitizer i'll come home and again i'm, I'm washing my hands again you mentioned emotional intelligence. I, I wonder, what are, you, what are you working on in that space with, with your clients? Mm. So emotional intelligence is a really, again, interesting and important aspect that hasn't really been touched on so much in the past, but it is such an important part of developing resilience. It's such an important part of coming to an awareness and an understanding of what we are feeling to be able to express ourselves with clarity. And again, coming into a place where we can respond instead of react. So emotional intelligence is really a practice of your own awareness around your feelings, understanding what you're feeling, why you're feeling it, instead of just having these explosive moods and things come up for you and you don't quite know how to label them, you don't quite know how to speak to them. Um, Having an emotional intelligence practice really helps you to identify a feeling when it happens. Uh, We've all experienced it, having something kind of bubble up inside of us and we don't know where it's come from, but we just kind of blur it out, blur out, or or something happens and we we react. We, We have a like a knee jerk kind of reaction to what is triggering us instead Mm -hmm. of being able to take a step back away from the emotion, question it, label it, see where it's coming from, get a bit curious about it and then respond with understanding rather than just like, Oh my goodness, you, you said something that, that triggered something maybe from the past, maybe from a completely different situation. And yeah, like actually really being present with what it is that you're feeling. And that's really, yeah, sorry. Super important. No, no, all good. I remember I did a a project with Google, actually. This is probably, oh boy, this might be eight years ago now. And I had, it basically, it gave me access to training, to how Google employees are trained. And there's an entire, uh, so before you even start working full-time, like this is part of your welcome to Google onboarding. And there's an entire I think it's like a three day lesson book on emotional intelligence. And it was the first time that I had ever actually experienced this. And what they do is they, they bring in professors from like all around and it's all virtual. So it's just like a, a virtual e-learning type of setting. And it's the, one of the questions is think of something that makes you really sad. And so you do that. And then it'll show you a series of images and it'll ask you to remember, try to, try to count how, how many sticks you see. Right. And, and you're like, oh, six, I counted six. And then there's like, there was 18. And so it goes to show you that when you're sad, so to your point, right, when you, re- 
it, it teaches you the recognition of one sadness that you that it prompted mm-hmm. you. It, it wasn't something that they showed you that made you sad. It was think of a sad time in your life and now try to remember. And it, it showed you how the emotion led to the product, the productivity being super low. Same thing with hyper, right? If you go, if you get, yeah. if there's something that like it, it uh, as another one was like, think of like the happiest moment in your life, like a birthday party when you were four and you got your favorite toy. And then they showed you same thing, a series of images. They're like, count how many clovers you see. And then one of them was like, did you see the gorilla show up on slide five? And you're like, yeah. what? And, and then, <laughs> and you watch it again. And sure enough, there's like a gorilla and you don't know that because you're looking to count hearts. And it's, Mm -hmm. again, it goes back to this emotional intelligence that I was kind of bummed out. I mean, I left that, that session being way more people. This should be common knowledge. This should be part of curriculum or college. You you know, it was, it was kind of one of these things where I was happy that there was a company so progressive or thinking ahead like Google, but it was also Mm -hmm. a bummer where it was like, there's millions of companies. And the, the only one I've ever seen pull this off is Google. And what if you don't work for Google, right? It makes it kind of like this. So I'm glad you're at least bringing this to people. Yeah. And I think that, so just to touch on that point, it is, it is so important. It's, it's just one of the most important things that we could understand about ourselves Uh, the ability to understand and accept ourselves and cope with the challenge challenges and obstacles that we're facing is something that we should be taught in theory, but we're, we're just not. And so that is actually another reason that I, I founded this company is because I'm, I just see so many people who have these situations that would be eased with tools and with practices that are commonplace for every individual. Everyone needs to know these things, but we just have never had the access. We've never had the society, the order, the structure in place to be able to have that come through in our learning, in our education. So this is really, really trying to change the face of work, but also of just the way that we are as human beings and the way that we are thinking about wellness. Because when sometimes when you say the, when, I know when I say the word wellness to people, often what comes back and what I've encountered is that people will be like, oh yeah, but I have, you know, I, I'm fit. Um, I'm healthy. I eat well. And that's, that's, that's sure. pretty much all people think of when they think of wellness and well-being. And it's like, yes, that, that's important for sure. That's definitely a part of it. But wellness is quite a multidimensional concept rather than it just being like, oh, you're physically fit or you're, you're eating healthily. It's like, well, how are you, how are you dealing socially? How are you managing occupationally and financially? How are you in your environmental stance? And that doesn't have to be like the actual environment, but you're just your, your physical surroundings, your home environment. Intellectually, how are you keeping yourself creative and like expanding your mind and your mental capacity? And then it comes down to like, well, then how are you taking care of your physical body? But there are so many, again, aspects and dimensions to what it really does mean to be well. It's not just one thing. It's, it's everything. Yeah, that's so important. I, I, I have a question for you in terms of uh, at what point do companies reach out to you? And so like, are the, <laughs> I would hope that you're seeing proactive, you know, leaders <laughs> at these companies wanting to say, hey, let's get ahead of this. But my fear is you're probably getting reactive because <laughs> so at what, you know, at what, when do you get yeah. the call? <laughs> yeah, getting a lot of, <laughs> so usually it's when there's been some kind of, you know, burnout, when there's been some kind of need for layoffs <laughs> and that's like affected the, the, affected the company culture. And generally, it's like in this time, especially, it has been mostly around like, well, we're just not, we're just not managing with our workloads. People aren't managing with their workloads and they need to work harder. And so that's also an interesting thing. And it's like, well, we, we basically want to do things to help our people be more productive to work harder. And it's like, okay, well, coming back to if a person is well and if a person is getting more generally, if, you, if a company is giving more to their employees, then they'll get more from their employees. Um, and so I'm not entirely, I still haven't quite figured out the balance of that because I mean, so many, so many companies are just like, mm, we don't want to give too much. We don't 
don't really have that much time. If you feel taken care of and you feel supported, then you're going to produce more. You're going to, you're going to do better and you're going to shine and expand rather than, you know, not feeling like you're supported and not feeling like you have any resources and then needing to grasp for every sick day that you can, trying to take as much leave as you can, trying to get a break whenever you can, because you don't have, you don't have that access and you don't have the, the people that are in that same that same space of understanding where you're at so yeah unfortunately it is basically around burnout around reaction and yeah we've had a high we have a highly reactive world but I think that is definitely shifting I think that's changing and I think a lot of people are seeing the vision forward the way forward is to really take care of and like, you know, self-love and wellness and all of these words have become such, you know, buzzwords in the last few years. And I feel like the opening up and expanding around the idea of like, you know, we, it's, it's good to take care of yourself. Self-care is necessary. Self-care is important, is a really huge shift that we need to make to step away from this culture of, you know, we have to keep hustling and like you're weak if you take a weekend and all of these other stories that we've told ourselves to that it means to be what it means to be successful and what it yeah. means to actually achieve but it what it doesn't mean anything if you don't have your health it doesn't mean anything if you're you're not well at the end of that process and i think a lot more people and companies are starting to realize that it's i really hope so i mean i i've been this is something where i've just gone so far against corporate america for such a long time which is which is kind of why i'm i'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur because i can control my own my own world but to me, it was like, I remember going to even visit friends at Google and they would be like, look, it's so cool. There's people playing volleyball, there's swimming pools. They have, you can get your hair cut and your dry cleaning and, you know, the food is taken care of. And it's not just Google. This is basically Silicon mm -hmm. Valley in a nutshell. And mm -hmm. I looked at it like, do you not see what's happening here? They're just trying to keep you here. And, here. Exactly. and the illusion of this retirement home, right, is, is not it's an illusion. Like they're just trying to keep you here because they want you to be as productive as possible. And if you really love your time here, you're not going to leave. And if you're not going to leave, you're going to work more. And I think for companies, it's, it's really important to not solve for how do we make our employees more productive, but solve for let's make our employees really happy. And a byproduct of that will end up being productivity. Because one of those is honest. And the second one of those is and I think it's hard. I mean, look, I think at the end of the day, we're in a capitalistic society. It gets super difficult to try to balance the two. If there's one thing that I think is happening on, under COVID, it's the human condition is really under a microscope. And, and there's, a, there's a beautiful thing to that where I, I really hope people take this time seriously and mm. we can come out of it and say, man, we were really doing a lot of dumb things in the past and, and we should be taking care of ourselves. And I'm glad your company is at least working with people to, to try to do that. I want to, there's always like an advice section of the podcast where I try to, you know, just tell people like, from your perspective as the professional, as the expert in this field, what are just some three things or four things that, you know, you could just bing, bing, bing. You could really say, hey, if you're, if you're struggling and, and you're in Zoom meetings all, these are the few things that you can do to find that balance again. Mm -hmm. So one of my main advice pieces to pretty much any coaching client or any client that I've had is to just take a moment to be where your feet are, to just be where you are, instead mm. of being in a million different places, because my goodness, there are so many places to be. And now we have even more places to be, even if we're just sitting in one chair, you know? So it's, it, it kind of takes, it takes us away from connecting back into our bodies, connecting back into our breath, connecting back into the fact that we are here now, not, you know, at the meeting, not um, in the future, not, not in the past. Instead of being in a million different places, just taking a moment to check in with your body at least once a day. And that is the bare minimum, you know, checking in with yourself once a day to just to actually say, like, I'm here this is how I'm breathing right now. How am I feeling right now? And take, kind of taking a, a mental body scan. And I'll take you through one of those in a moment here, but it's kind of scanning through and seeing like, where am I feeling, you know, tension or tightness? Is my body feeling tired? Am I feeling sore? 
I mean, I've seen so many people come in with injury. I, I used to, I used to practice as an osteopath and I, I had saw so many people come in with injuries and they'd be like, I don't even know how it happened. And I'm like, well, how, how much were you, how, how were you checking in with yourself? How much time were you taking to stretch and warm up? Those practices are important because it helps you to take a mental scan of what's happening with your body, how you're feeling, what's going on. Um, so that is definitely number one. And then I would also say to further on from that, just observe your autopilot. So observe those places in your day where you do just go into automatic functioning. And I mean, like a lot of our days are spent in automatic functioning and not really thinking about what we're doing, not really thinking about the intention behind what our, what our actions are creating. You know, mm -hmm. it's in, in, and so observing those moments when you are just on auto, you're not, you're not thinking, you're not connecting. Try to connect in those moments. Try to come back and be like, oh, wait, hey, I am, I'm, actually, <laughs> I'm actually doing this mindlessly. And that feeds into my next piece of advice, which always do your days, do your whatever you are, whatever you're trying to do, what, do it with intention come back to a reason why you're doing what you're doing, because that's what's going to help to guide you when things do get foggy, when things do get unclear or uncertain. Tapping into an intention of why you're here, why you're doing what you're doing, helps to drive the decisions that you make around what you are doing. Helps to really drive the awareness and the focus toward what is actually best for me in this moment, from my, from my place of intention, instead of like, it just needs to be done. I just need to be busy. I just need to keep going. Mm. Like, do I really, do I really need to be doing this right now? Does that line up with why I'm doing what I'm doing today? So I, I mean, for me, I personally set an intention every day, but not, some people set an intention, you know, weekly or monthly and allow that to guide them as their, you know, their North star to be able to move toward the things that they, that they actually want to create and they want to bring in. Um, <laughs> it's, so, it's okay. It's totally okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah we have dogs like, barking. Yeah. <laughs> well, You're stuck in South Africa. To, <laughs> exactly. Doug just wants to sing the song of its people to the, to the podcast listeners. Um, and so, yeah, it all comes back to you. It's, it's great it all advice. comes back to why. That's the one thing I always tell people is like, you have to really know your why, because if you do that, if you, you know, if you really know your, your why in life, it sets everything up. Everything becomes massively easier, whether you're starting a company and the one thing I caution people too is the, the why can't be money. It's, it needs to be you, something you're solving for, whether it's family related, whether it's to provide a better path for your kids, whether it's to help people, right? To like, like in your business, it's, I would say it's pretty easy, right? You're literally transforming lives by helping people. And um, obviously there's money in that, but it, go, it goes back to money is a byproduct of of your why instead of if I go chase money, then I'll help people, right? There's a massive difference between those two things. Hey everyone, just a quick interjection here. We're about to get into a guided meditation session. And if you have the time, I strongly encourage you to find a quiet space where you can follow along. Now that being said, I know that this may not be possible wherever you are right now. So if you'd like to skip ahead to the end of the interview, scrub to 4815. You can always come back and take part in this meditation class at a later time. You said we were going to do uh, an exercise of some kind? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I basically just wanted to take you through um, a body scan, if that's okay with you. If that's yeah, something that you'd be interested in. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm just going to kind of talk you through talk you through different parts of your body, talk you through different parts of what's, what you're experiencing and what's happening for you. So if you just want to come into a nice comfortable seat, making sure that you feel comfortable where you are. Okay. So allow your shoulders to relax. Yeah. Yeah. Let me Good. Move this closer. Okay. Just get yourself a little bit more. Yeah. I don't think you're going to be saying anything for a few moments here. If anyone's listening, they can do this along with me and they can follow along. Just listen to the sound of my voice. You don't need to see me. You don't need to worry about what I'm doing on screen or anything. 
but I just want you to come into your own body. So maybe that means closing down your eyes or if it's not comfortable for you to close your eyes, you can just softly gaze at something in front of you that's not moving. Allowing yourself to settle into the seat that you're in. And just begin by taking a few long, slow, deep breaths. Noticing what that does to the rhythm of your breath as it is in this moment. As you start to engage your inhale and your exhale, just becoming aware of how your body is feeling. How does it feel to be in the chair that you're in? Noticing all of the points of contact that your body is making with the chair. And just allowing your breath to find its own natural rhythm. And bring your full attention to noticing each in-breath as it enters your nostrils as it travels down your lungs and causes your belly to expand. You'll notice each out breath as your belly contracts, and the air moves through the lungs back up through the nostrils or the mouth. Invite your full attention to the flow of your breath. Just notice if your mind wants to wander here, because that is the nature of the mind, to want to think. And we're not trying to stop that, not trying to change that or stop the thoughts. I'd rather just observe the types of thoughts that hook or distract you. Noticing is the richest part of learning. You just start to become aware of the crown of your head, the top of your head. Noticing if you feel any sensations in this area, shifting your full awareness to the top of the head And just seeing how bringing your awareness here helps to just bring a little bit more sensation into the moment. Allow that awareness now to start to shift down your head, imagining like a stream of water flowing down from the crown of your head around the muscles of your scalp to your forehead. Noticing the positioning of your eyes and your eyebrows. Allowing the eyes to sink heavily into their sockets. Relaxing the muscles of your face. Bringing awareness to the muscles around your mouth. If you hold quite a bit of tension in your jaw, sometimes your tongue tends to stick to the roof of your mouth. So see what happens if you just gently remove the tongue away from the roof of the mouth. That helps to relax the jaw to soften the muscles of the neck. And see if you can allow this awareness to keep moving down your neck into your shoulders. We all tend to carry so much in our shoulders. So just noticing the sensations that may be present in this area. 
whether it's a sensation of tightness or soreness. See if you can just take a nice deep breath and breathe into anything that you feel in your shoulders. As you relax and you release the breath, allowing the shoulders to just relax down the back, letting go of anything that you're holding there. And then allow your awareness to continue to move down your arms on both sides of your body, just scanning down, becoming aware of any areas that feel any sensation, any tightness, soreness, even any temperature changes. Scanning into your forearms, your wrists, your palms, your fingers. Noticing what is present here in your hands. Coming aware of whatever you feel in your hands. And allow your awareness to continue to move, to shift. Start to feel it moving down the torso, from the chest, into your belly, and as you're here around your belly space, Again, checking in with how the breath is moving. Feeling the rise and fall of each inhale and exhale. And then allowing the awareness to start to shift further into your hips. Here maybe becoming aware of what your hips are making contact with or if there are sensations in your hips. Notice your body from one side to the other. If you notice more on your right side or your left side, Scanning down your legs, the powerful muscles of your thighs that help you to move forward, to continually shift. Feeling into the kneecaps. And allow your awareness to just get very curious around this area, around anything that may be held at this joint. Sometimes when we're scanning through our bodies and we're bringing awareness to these areas, feelings tend to arise or memories or emotions. And this is normal. Just allowing them to come and to go. Observing them without attaching to them. We keep the awareness moving now down the legs, through the fronts of the shins, around the backs of the calves. And it can sometimes feel very difficult to do this to really fully notice how your body is feeling. So don't beat yourself up if you can't feel anything. But just keep that awareness in that area. For 
Let it start to move towards your ankles. Another joint that may carry some emotion, may carry some feeling or stories. And feeling your awareness just moving fully into your feet. Fully and completely into the soles of the feet. Becoming aware of anything that your feet are making contact with. Whether it's your feet on the ground or in your socks or your shoes. And in this moment, start to invite your awareness back to your full body, all the way from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Notice what you feel here. Are there any sensations? any tingles, any heaviness. Just taking a moment and breathing into your whole body from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. fully observational, fully aware. Become aware of anything that you may be able to hear in your immediate environment, from the loudest sound to the most subtle. Become aware of anything that your body or your skin makes contact with, from your clothing to the accessories that you've chosen to put on today. And even though your eyes are closed, noticing what it is that you may be able to see. Are there flecks of light, color, or is it just pure darkness? You're slowly inviting yourself to come back into this physical moment, starting to blink your eyes open a few times and allow them to just gently let the light filter in. Bringing yourself back. That's excellent. Yeah. Wow. And just allowing yourself to, yeah, just be and you move through your days with this awareness. So often we are in another place when we're doing anything in our days, you know, we're somewhere else, our mind is somewhere else. And what you've done here today is to generously listen to your body, to take some time to be fully aware and present to what you're experiencing. Again, I know it's difficult. I know the sensations are sometimes like, oh, like my mind is racing in a million different, different ways. But to actually bring yourself into that where awareness of like generously listening helps you not only to listen to yourself, but then to extend that out and to listen to others, to be able to move through your days with consciousness, awareness, and intention. That's amazing. Thank you very much. That's so Thank great. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so let, much for allowing me to guide you. Oh, so nice. Tell tell everyone it's hard to finish this podcast now. So <laughs> yeah, <sorry. laughs> tell everyone where they can find you and your company, whether it's your website or Instagram. Yep, absolutely. So you can find my company, Remote Team Wellness, on all of the social medias at Remote Team Wellness. Um, and you can visit 
our website, remoteteamwellness.com. If you would like a organizational assessment for your company, uh, we're offering free organizational assessments for the month of August because it is National Wellness Month. Um, and then if you want to connect with me personally, I am the chocolate pretzel on all the social medias. So really looking forward to hearing from you and to working with you. Thank you so much for your time, though, Diego. It's been such a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. This is amazing.